Good evening and welcome to the special presentations of the City of Moreno Valley. Today is September the 17th, 2019. Our first presentation is a recognition of the City's achievement in earning the CAFR and PAFR Awards. Councilmember Cabrera will speak and present a plaque to Marshall Ironman and his team. Good evening, buenas tardes. Uh, today I'm proud to announce that the city has earned, uh, you know, like he needs any more, I mean he has plenty, right? He keeps bringing them in. He brings his own. <laughs> But we, we're very, very proud to announce that the city has earned uh, two top awards from the Government Finance Officers Association of the United States and Canada as a result, as a result of our strong financial controls and continued focus on financial transparency. Uh, the GFOA is an independent organization which encourages local governments to go beyond the minimum requirements of financial reports and support more of the spirit of transparency and full disclosure. The goal is to ensure that the public has easy access to information about the city's financial health. And at our last council meeting, Marshall actually uh, showed everyone a glimpse of our citizen's guide that shows our budget and the breakdown of where the tax dollars go and everything. So that's just one example of what his department is doing. And the award winners are selected by experts in public sector financial reporting, including financial statement preparers, independent auditors, academics, and other finance professionals. The City of Moreno Valley has been awarded the highest form of recognition for governmental accounting and financial reporting for its fiscal year 2017-2018 comprehensive annual financial report, also known as CAFR. This marks the 21st year in a row that the city has earned the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting from the GFOA. The city was also honored with the award for outstanding achievement in popular annual financial reporting for its, uh, for its PAFR, it's, it's CAFR and PAFR. And the PAFR provides a uh, condensed summary of the city's finances in a user-friendly layout. The city has earned this distinction every year since it began publishing in 2014. So we're on a record and we're keeping it going. That's why we have this amazing staff here with us. It's getting heavy, so I'll, I'll make it. I'll make it quick here. So uh, I would just like to extend our gratitude to Marshall Ironman, our chief financial officer, for our hardworking um, financial management, and also the entire uh, financial management staff here at the City of Moreno Valley. Congratulations. Uh, if I may, um, we do have some finance staff here. As you know, everything that we do in the city um, begins with the city council. Uh, and then gets executed by the staff. And we have a large group that makes sure that we not only have good transparency, but we're able to communicate those financials uh, to the public as well. So uh, if we can invite them all up real Absolutely. fast and just say hi. If you just want to come up. And Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. So this is a very small group. We're part of the team. Um, so with that, I just want to say thank you, and uh, we look forward to doing many more awards, creating our own, generating more. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you very much.
Let's give our finance department another round of applause. The second presentation is recognition of the employee of the second quarter. Mayor Gutierrez will speak and present a plaque and certificate to Daphne McKinney. Please, please join us. All right. You know, it is really an honor uh, to present this award uh, today uh, to someone very special, uh, Daphne McKinney, uh, the employee of the second quarter. And today, as I was getting ready to go to work, I was just thinking, you know, it's really an honor to present this to you because uh, since I've met you, you know, six years ago, you have always just done outstanding community service, uh, customer service to everyone. She always has that nice smile uh, that, you know, I can see from far away and, you know, so, and she's just a very a strong, hard, hard worker. Daphne works in our public works department uh, as a facilities uh, maintenance worker. Daphne is recognized for her positive attitude, strong work ethic, and superior customer service. Daphne's expertise constantly helps improve efficiency and shorten the time duration required to complete tasks. Daphne has worked faithfully to fulfill the vision and mission of the city of Marina Valley by improving the quality of life for our citizens and fellow employees. Her commitment to provide customer care contributes significantly to the success of the city of Marina Valley. So Daphne, it is my pleasure to present you with this plaque Also a card as well, gift card there, um, in recognition of you being named the employee of the quarter for the second quarter of 2019. Congratulations. Okay, if there's any family or anyone that would like to come up or, uh, or take pictures, and then also um, Angelic Davis, the purchasing manager, if you could come up as well. Um, and then I was going to ask uh, Daphne if you would like to say a few words. <laughs> I'll be on the you spot. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, and I give God the glory. Thanks to Financial Management Services. I'm thankful for the recognition and it's an honor to serve my community as well as my fellow co-workers. Um, I especially want to thank the rest of the facility's Blue Crew for always supporting me, and I'm thankful to work with such a great group of people. Thanks to my family and friends for coming out and supporting me. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. We're going to ask also uh, the purchasing manager if you'd like to say a few words. just like to say as long as I've worked with Daphne she's always exhibited excellent customer service skills excellent positive attitude and she's been willing to complete any task given to her and go above and beyond there's been situations in which working in facilities you know things come up as emergencies that you don't expect and Daphne has always been willing and ready to jump right in and take care of any and every situation that comes her way or comes our way um, she's an excellent contributor to the team and we really appreciate you. And I'm just very thankful to have the opportunity to work with you as I know the rest of our team is, the City of Reno Valley is. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations.
Let's give Daphne McKinney another round of applause. Thank you. The following presentation is a proclamation recognizing Clean Air Day. Council Member Thornton will speak and present a proclamation to Michael Wolf and Rick Sanzmeyer. Good evening, everyone. It is my great honor and pleasure to present a proclamation recognizing October 2nd, 2019 as Clean Air Day. Clean Air Day highlights the important role of clean air and how it impacts our health and our environment. With the support of the community, we can continue to raise awareness of the dangers of air pollution. Air pollution is a public health problem that is just as dangerous as cancer, heart disease, and obesity. We ask that everyone take part in the Clean Air Pledge and start making a difference today. I would like to express the gratitude to our directors and staff with the City of Reno Valley who work hard to support Clean Air Day as part of the efforts to improve air quality and help educate the public on the risk of air pollution. In order to appropriately recognize and commemorate Clean Air Day, the City Council of the City of Reno Valley hereby issues this proclamation. Whereas the Coalition for Clean Air Day launched to unite the community to take action in improving air quality and help develop traits to achieve clean air and recognize October 2nd, 2019 as clear Clean Air Day, and whereas Californians will be joining across the state to clear the air and pledging to take at least one action to help better the quality of health, environment, and economy. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the mayor and the city council of the city of Reno Valley, on behalf of its citizens and staff, does hereby proclaim this October 2nd, 2019, as Clean Air Day in the city of Reno Valley, and urge all citizens to participate to help clean the air and promote awareness for the future. Here tonight to accept this proclamation is our Community Development Director, Rick Sanzemeyer, and our Public Works Director and City Engineer, Michael Wolf. Will you please join me? Thank you. Would you like to say a few words? What, uh, what I like about AQMD is we often get grants from them, so we, we utilize their funding for a lot of different things. We buy um, different types of vehicles, so we are very um, tied together with AQMD, and we appreciate the partnership that we have with them on things like that where they provide us funds to make sure that we have clean vehicles and um, things like that. So I really appreciate this. I think this is a really good um, opportunity for us to express our appreciation to AQMD as well. Thank you so very much for accepting that award. Next on the uh, agenda, our final presentation will be an Animal Services Division update. If we can have Mr. Steve Fries come to the podium. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, City Council members. Uh, we wanted to give you a, uh, an update um, similar to what we've done before, but uh, we looked at what we accomplished over fiscal year 18-19, um, and I'll go over that with you. Steve, can you speak into the microphone? Can you hear me now? Is that better? Okay. A little better, just so that way the recording can get it nice, clear. Okay, got it. So 1819, uh, our results just overall globally, uh, our field animal control officers responded to well over 12,000 uh, field responses throughout the year. Uh, also our animal license inspector went over 10,000 residences were canvassed. Again, that's part of our uh, public health component where we're looking for rabies control. And so that's uh, one of the things that we felt was a great accomplishment for, for one of our staff members to do in one year. 
In addition, we also offer 20 uh, special adoption events. We do those throughout the year. There's a variety of them that we do, typically at least one a month. In some cases, we'll do two or three. We also uh, offer five low-cost vaccination clinics, and this year what we're going to do is add another component to that. Well, we'll be providing uh, free microchips uh, using our PETCO grant so that we'll allow residents to not only uh, get an opportunity to get their dogs and cats vaccinated, but also get them microchipped. Uh, last year we had 359 feral cats that were saved, and we have that program ongoing. And 674 special needs pets were placed, and that's uh, those are animals that come to us that are broken, that are ill, that are typically not what we would find as uh, adoptable pets. So we work with our rescue partners. We have well over 400 now that are approved partners that we work with, and that's where we place those special needs pets in addition to our friends with the uh, National ASPCA organization. That's a number there that I think is a little bit low because these are based on what we have when people sign in to come to our facility. So I suspect that that number is probably closer to 35,000 people that come and visit our shelter annually. So that we get a lot of traffic. So here's the, the real success story um, for last year. Our 91% live release rate for dogs. When we compare that to where we were at 10 years ago, the live release rate was only 49% for dogs. So you can see that's a significant difference and a much better outcome for our pets. Even more so with our cats, it's 65% last year. 10 years ago, it was a mere 11%. So that's a significant increase as well. So we're still moving in the right direction. We have more work to do with our live cats. Uh, but we'll uh, hopefully at some point in time we'll be able to get up to that 90% uh, level with our cats. Over 4,300 pets with positive outcomes. It's, it's a lot of, when you think about a couple of dogs at home, when you're looking at 4,300 animals, over 4,300 animals, that's a lot of wet noses that go out the front door. <laughs> uh, our ASPCA, we got national recognition from them as part of uh, obtaining with them, working with other shelters throughout the country, uh, 100,000 at-risk animals that were sent to other places throughout the state of California. But interestingly enough, they not only, only end up in the state of California, but they go in the Pacific Northwest, Oregon, Washington, Colorado, as far back as Florida and New York. So these animals that come from our community, that if they're at risk, we do all we can do to make sure that they are placed in uh, a transport uh, program with the ASPCA and we know that they're going to a place that they're going to get a second chance at a, at, a, at a new home. Our PECO Foundation, or the California Department of Food and Ag, and uh, another program through CDFA uh, is the Pet Lovers License Plate Program. And uh, these grant awards that we uh, apply for this year in, uh, in the spring of uh, 2019, we saw a uh, $30,000 Petco Foundation Award. We're still working on that this year, and we're hoping that we can actually use that entire award for this year. Again, uh, helping a number of different people throughout the uh, uh, throughout the community. Again, also with our uh, the 27,500 that we received this year, also from the California Department of Food and Ag. Who does that help? It helps our residents, our local residents in the community of Moreno Valley that need spay neuter services for their pets. It's targeted for low income people who own pets, as well as uh, people that are transient homeless, homeless people. We actually had one today that came to the shelter. Uh, they fell onto hard times. They lost contact with their dog. They came in today. They reclaimed their pet. We were able to get that pet over tomorrow to our vet clinic and have it altered at no cost to them. So again, it's an animal that's in our community. We want to make sure that they don't continue to have further offspring. So this is one of the things that we can do to help those folks. Veterans with pets as well. So those veterans out there that need that service, we can provide that to them. And we'll do that throughout the year. Successful programs ongoing have been our public pet adoptions where we've actually subsidized the spay neuter for our veterans because we do offer uh, an ongoing special every day for uh, low cost uh, adoptions as well as for our senior citizens. We also have special adoption events throughout the year where we offer that to the general public as well. 
and our trap neuter release cap program. I'll get a little bit more into that, but that's been an ongoing program that we've had for the last four years. It's been very successful. Special programs, again, that the vouchers, which are part of our, uh, what we get from uh, our, our grant money. The TNR program, again, also qualifies under that grant uh, money that we receive. Adoption ambassadors and fostered adopters are similar programs, but they work really well because a lot of our uh, underage kittens and puppies have an opportunity to get out of the facility where there's a lot of stress, and they're going to do better in a home than they will in our facility because they're going to be taken care of by people in a home environment rather than in a shelter environment where the stress level is much higher on those animals that have, uh, you know, uh, they have the uh, they have the unfortunate ability to catch disease much sooner because of their their they're just compromised at that young age. Whisker Wednesdays has been an ongoing uh, positive program for us. And the next slide, I'm going to kind of get into a little bit more of uh, the professional pet photos and volunteer opportunities at the animal shelter. These are three pictures of, of uh, pets that all had positive outcomes. The dog was uh, adopted uh, back in November. The cat on the right was uh, adopted, I, I believe it was in February of this year. And then the, the little cat there in the bowl, and I don't know how the photographer gets that cat in a bowl. I'm not even sure how they got the bumblebee in that picture, but I know the cat was definitely in the bowl. <laughs> I don't know about the bumblebee. I'm not sure what happened to the bumblebee, but the, uh, the cat was, uh, was processed through one of our rescue partners. Uh, they took 654 professional f uh, photographs. These are just three as examples. 652 had positive outcomes. Amazing, amazing outcome. 99.7% positive outcome for those animals that go through this program. A volunteer that comes into our facility, who's 2016 Volunteer of the Year, she comes in uh, every year or, or every week on Thursday morning and spends about two, three hours and, and takes these photographs with our staff. So we want to really thank them. They do a great job. A couple of our events. Again, these. Uh, all of this is, is supported with our award-winning media and communications team. Without their teamwork, without their support, we wouldn't be able to do these kind of events. And, and this is, you know, top-notch. You can see what they do for us. It may, it's, it's great graphics that they do, and they do a great job of help, helping promote our pets. Now, this is the one that I left for next to last. Uh, we are going to launch a uh, Finding Rover app. It's a free app. You, and I did this, uh, and it takes about two minutes. You put it on your uh, Android or your iPhone. You download the app, and what it does is that you can register your pet on this app. If your pet gets lost and ends up at a shelter like Moreno Valley, and we take a picture of that pet, it ties in with Finding Rover, and it automatically tells you your dog is at the animal shelter. We don't have to call you. We will. We don't have to mail you a letter. We'll do that, too. This is inst instantaneous. 90, uh, they use facial recognition software. That's 98% accurate. It's been around for about four or five years now, anywhere between San Diego County and the city of Sacramento. Uh, we did a lot of research on it. We did a test environment on it. We found that it works well. Uh, Marshall's going to love this part because there's zero cost to the general fund for us to do this. <laughs> zero cost to the general fund. He's smiling. He's going to get this app. In fact, he's doing it right now, I think. And um, so we've already got the software through Chameleon, our HLP uh, partners. Uh, we use a, uh, a, a program or a module. It's called Postmaster. And what that does is it takes the information from our database. We already take the pictures, and it delivers that information to Finding Rover. And so they have a database of their own. They use the facial recognition software, and that's where they make the match, and they contact the person that's pre-registered their pet. You don't have to do that. You can do it at the time when maybe you lose your pet. But it also not only does it offer the fact that you can find your dog or cat, but it also has information on there for pets that are currently lost in our community as well as ones that are available for adoption. So when I saw that, I was said, yeah, that we got to do this because this is just another tool in our toolbox where we can help have more positive outcomes. And again, we need to do more work with our cats. This is one of the tools that can do that. And I'm available for any questions that you might have. Thank you, Steve.
And once again, thank you so much for the leadership that you provide to our animal services division as the director and the um, public, the face to the public of who we are at the animal shelter and your kindness and your compassion for our pets because to us they're our babies, we love them. And when we go there and you just give us all the understanding and I, I see you interact with the public and I think that um, we couldn't have a better person. So thank you so much and thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give him another round of applause. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our special presentations. Our regular council meeting will begin shortly.
Good evening and welcome to the joint meeting of the City Council of the City of Myrna Valley, Myrna Valley Community Services District, City of Successor Agency for the Community Redevelopment Agency of the City of Myrna Valley, Myrna Valley Housing Authority, Myrna Valley Public Financing Authority, and the Board of Library Trustees. The City Council receives a separate stipend for CSD meetings. I now call this meeting to order on September 17, 2019 at 6, 10 p.m. The Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Commissioner Rafael Brugueras. Please remain standing for the invocation which will be given by Pastor Jeff White from Sandals Church. Can everyone stand and put their hands over their heart? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you for having me tonight. Um, let's go ahead and pray. God, we just want to pause before we enter this meeting tonight, God, and just invite you here. Uh, we are grateful that you have uh, protected Moreno Valley and you continue to grow Moreno Valley as a community. God, I just want to pray for the leaders in this room who are making decisions on behalf of uh, the population of Moreno Valley, God. And so I just pray that you will just give them great wisdom tonight and God, that they will... Um, they will just uh, together make great decisions that are going to impact the community. Thank you for their service, God. Thank you for tonight and each person that's here and the topics that are going to be discussed. And so we just invite you into tonight, and we're just grateful, God, in your name. Amen. Thank you, uh, Pastor White from Sandals Church, for the invocation. Uh, we'll go ahead and do a uh, roll call. Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Council Member Thornton? Present. Councilmember Marquez? Here. Councilmember Cabrera? Here. Mayor Pro Timbaca? Here. Mayor Gutierrez? Here. Staff introductions, please. Pat Hawkins, not a city clerk. Jessica Lambaran, administrative assistant. Marshall Ironman, chief financial officer, city treasurer. Martin Kozanowitz, city attorney. Tom DeSantis, city manager. Alan Brock, assistant city manager. Rick Sanzamar, community development director. Dave Lillivier, acting chief of police. Kathleen Sanchez, Human Resources Director. Patty Solano, Parks and Community Services Director. Michael Wolf, Director of Public Works, City Engineer. All right, well, thank you, everyone. Uh, just as a friendly reminder, we do have Spanish translation services in the back if you need it. Uh, before we hear public comments, I do ask uh, and encourage everyone participating to keep their comments respectful toward each other, um, especially uh, the individuals at the podium. Finally, I ask that speakers bear in mind that comments are limited to three minutes for each speaker. Public comments on matters on the agenda will be taken up as the item is called for business between staff's report and city council deliberation. Those wishing to speak on any subject, however, not on the agenda under the jurisdiction of the city council may do so now. Those wishing to speak should complete and submit a blue speaker slip to the bailiff. And again, there's a three minute time limit. Uh, in order to preserve the meeting decorum, council and staff will not respond during public comments. Uh, we will respond after, towards the end of the meeting. Any council comments or questions to staff will be addressed uh, during the council closing comments. So, Madam Clerk, uh, how many speakers do we have tonight? I have four. Okay. Go ahead and uh, call them up. Angel uh, Lopez. Three at a time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Angel Lopez, Barbara Baxter, and Jacqueline Thomas. at the time there we go good evening mayor mayor pro tem councilwoman thornton councilman marquez councilman cabrera before i begin on why i'm here tonight i just want to address the city of marina valley and folks in the room happy constitution day and uh i'm thankful for the constitution for a number of reasons and why i swore an oath to protect and defend the constitution for 24 years of my life of honorable military service as a combat veteran and wounded warrior which leads me to the next uh concern I have and as a combat veteran who served on the battlefield in Afghanistan in 2007 and lost two brothers on the battlefield one of whom one of whom at the time of his death 26 years old a uh, Pennsylvania National Guardsman he left behind a fiance and eight-year-old son why did he serve why did he volunteer well because of uh, what happened on 
9-11 is a time for our country and our nation to honor our first responders, law enforcement, veterans, heroes. And here locally in Moreno Valley, we have March Air Reserve Base, the largest employer, uh, many of whom uh, as a reservist also serve as law enforcement, first responders. And my question today, because I've not received any responses via social media or email with the exception of one. Before I get to that, I do want to acknowledge Councilwoman Thornton Councilman Marquez and Councilman Cabrera for acknowledging 9-11 with our first responders, law enforcement and veterans, thank you. However, for the mayor and the mayor pro tem, where's the acknowledgement? Uh, where, where did we go wrong? What are we so busy on that we can't take time to acknowledge our veterans, first responders and law enforcement on 9-11? That, uh, that's very disheartening. But anyway, that's why I'm here today. And then next, um, regarding the military banner program, love it, great opportunity for veterans, for folks to submit their applications and get recognized by the city. However, when I researched some of the cities nearby, I also found that some cities do not charge uh, veterans uh, for that program. So the $150 for those that are actively serving and the $200 for veterans, uh, for some that may be a steep because we do have homeless veterans we do have veterans that live at the U.S. Vet Center there in March Air Base. And uh, for a lot of these folks, $200 is a steep price to afford for military banners. So I plead to the council, please take an opportunity, please communicate, and let's do something about those prices. Bring them down or all together. Uh, let's help out veterans and make them free. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Barbara Baxter, Jacqueline Thomas, and Shirley Elder. Fabulous. Barbara Baxter, City of Moreno Valley, President Trail Seekers of Moreno Valley, here gleefully and joyfully for the last time to promote our Disaster Preparedness Expo, which will be held this Saturday, that's September 21st, from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. at the Moreno Valley Equestrian Center. And in honor of D September being declared uh, National uh, Disaster Preparedness Month, we'd like to fall in line with that as well and let our neighbors know and our other, the equestrian community know that in the event of a disaster, like we're seeing so many fires in the hills already, and the fire season hasn't really begun, although it never seems to end in California, that um, we are indeed in danger more times than not. And it's good to know f how to evacuate your animals and your family. And if you're a neighbor of someone who has horses or llamas or alpacas or goats or pigs or whatever, it's good to know how to get them out safely as well as get your family out as well. We're pleased to have Sheriff Chad Bianco giving opening statements in time of a disaster, a national emergency. Those are your law enforcement, your first responders are who we all look to for guidance and help as well as we're, uh, we've uh, gotten the acceptance from Councilmember Thornton to come out as well. Um, we will have um, fire suppression from the Moreno Valley Fire Department. It's more than a notion to know how to work a fire extinguisher in the best of times. However, when it's an emergency and your house is on fire or your barn's on fire, it would be a good idea to know how to work one. You need to pull the pin. So we have those coming out. We have a trailer loading demonstration as well. And my horse loads well. She's a little, little skittish on the uh, unloading, but uh, it's good to know how to do that ahead of time. Like with so many things, it's better to be prepared at the worst of times. It's a terrible time to try and learn. So we invite you all to come out and take part with this. We have the 4-H, the Tumbleweeds. They're a youth group that's here in Moreno Valley. And we have the mounted posses coming out as well. They're always in need of, of uh, people to join their groups. And we plan on having a silent auction with some incredible items and a used tax sale. And we're just going to spend the day up there enjoying each other's company and learning how to take care of ourselves, our loved ones, and most importantly, our four-legged loved ones, our big fur babies, our horses. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you there. As I say, this will be my last time speaking on this. However, we're working on next year, 2020. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Next speaker. Jacqueline Thomas and Shirley Elder. All right, so my name is Jacqueline Thomas, and I am the Enrichment Center Director of Hope Vision Center. So thank you for allowing me to speak on this evening. 
I wanted to just say thank you to the city of Moreno Valley, as well as the Park and Recs Department. We've had the pleasure and um, the privilege of working um, hand in hand with the rec, uh, Park and Recs Department this summer, being able to service our basketball, golf, and VAPA camps for students over the summer. And so we were able to service over 450 students in the city of Moreno Valley, as well as its neighboring cities. And so we have the opportunity to go ahead and make sure that our students are serviced and being able to have education as well as um, the services they need to have enrichment and things like that. So we are very grateful for the opportunity and we will continue to go forward in our year round program and hope to work with you guys again the upcoming summer. Thank you. Thank you, Jacqueline. Okay, next uh, two speakers or next speaker. Charlie Elder and Manuel Topete. Yes, and my name is Shirley. I'm also from Hope Vision Center. I am the enrichment advisor for Hope uh, Vision Center. And I also wanted to say thank you because I personally work with the students with performing arts and that's where we're doing music and we're doing drama and we're in singing and all those different things, uh, part of performing arts. And it's such a great motivation to tell students like, hey, your city leaders are coming out to see you. So it's I just wanted to personally thank you guys for all of your support and always um, coming by and dropping by and seeing their showcases. And we're going to have much more showcases for you guys to come and support us on as well so just a special thanks again you guys thank you thank you shirley next speaker manu good evening council well i came here two weeks ago and i asked some questions and uh just want to clarify because i haven't gotten no good answers i asked about the street lights in edgemont and the city manager at the end of the meeting said that the Riverside controlled it. Well, I got a call about an hour ago, an hour ago, just before the meeting, to make sure that uh, I guess I was happy before I came up here. And they said there's an Edgemont community that's in charge of those lights. Well, how do we get involved with that? I mean, I've never, I've, I grew up in Edgemont. I've been, uh, I've had my business in Edgemont for 30 years. Who are these people? My council member hasn't directed any of those towards my business. You know, when you have the kind of crime that we have in Edgemont, somebody needs to address those people that are controlling the lights. The manager says that, uh, well, they didn't want to change the lights. I'm not talking about changing the lights. I'm talking about putting in lights. We don't got lights. You know, 10 years ago, I came up here and I spoke and I was home invasion the next day. Four unmasked people came into my house, tied me up, knocked out my teeth because I spoke about the exact thing I'm speaking about right now. It's scary to come up here, but I have to do it. Who's in charge of the lights? Why are you guys devaluing Edgemont? It's so close to the base. That should be the first priority. When people come in from Riverside, that's the first thing they see. Why wouldn't we want to beautify that? Huh? Why don't we take care of Edgemont like we're trying to take care of Sunnymead Boulevard? By the way, it's a mess again. Look at Edgemont, we keep it clean. I drive around in my truck, my customers, my family, and we pick up the trash, we do it. Ain't been no cleanup up there. The problem is somebody is trying to devalue Edgemont. Brady versus the city of Moreno Valley is where we need to start looking for the people that are out there. You know, code enforcement was harassing me 10 years ago, and when I stepped up to the plate and told them to stop harassing me because I had lights that were too bright, because my LEDs were too bright, because I wanted to keep it lit so that I wouldn't get robbed because I've been held up. My neighbors have been held up. There was a hostage situation at the pawn shop. Don't you think we need lights? And when I ask these questions, the city manager and the attorney, I see the smirks. I'm frustrated. I'm not asking for something that the people in Edgemont don't deserve. A bathroom in Edgemont, at least. If we're going to honor a hero, Adrienne Mitchell, Give her a bathroom if you're going to put her name on it. At least do that. I want some information, and I don't want it the next day before the meeting an hour. I need to know who's in charge of the lights and help us get lights, please. That's it. All right. Thank you, Manuel. Okay. Madam Clerk? No more speakers. Okay. That closes the uh, public comment period there. Uh, we'll move straight to uh, consent calendar. 
Uh, we are now going to move to our consent, joint consent calendar sections A through E on the agenda. All items listed under the consent calendar sections A, B, C, and D and E are considered to be routine and non-controversial and may be enacted by one motion. The motion to adopt the consent calendars is deemed to be a separate motion by each agency and shall be recorded by the city clerk. Items withdrawn for report or discussion will be heard after public hearing items. Uh, does the council have any items that they'd like to mention or disc or pool? Okay. Um, and Madam Clerk, any public comments on? Yes, there's one that um, was on an agenda item, but not on this agenda item. And then there's one on this agenda item. Okay, so what do you mean by that? Um, I, I think it's a public speaker that got put in on my other site, but he's not speaking on agenda item for today's meeting. He wants to reference an agenda item from June 11th. Okay, is it from the minutes? I don't know, maybe. No, he said item A3 on June 11th agenda. But you're saying A3, you want to speak on A3? Yeah, so he just wants to speak on A3. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so then there's two people, Mar Martin Morfin and Raul G-U-E-D-E-A. Okay, so okay, so we'll have uh, Martin first. Is Martin here? And then right after Martin, uh, okay. Good evening, council members. Uh, my name is Martin Morfin. I'm here representing Asplen Construction to speak on item A14, which is uh, the award to Hotline Construction for the Day Street Line extension. Oh. Um, I want to submit a contest for the bid. I did send over a, um, an official protest to the uh, city clerk on behalf of Asplen. Uh, Aspen Construction was the apparent low bidder on the the day the Day Street Line extension by uh, approximately one hundred twenty thousand dollars, but there were the bid was rejected because the subcontractors listed on the project uh, when the percent of the contract value was listed, it was listed as a, a percentage for each line item. Um, and when you add those totals, they appear to exceed the 50% of subcontractor award. And the contract uh, is required to be self-performed by the bidding contractor by more than 50%. So when you actually do the calculation by line item, it's uh, only 20% performed by a subcontractor and 80% by the bidding contractor, which is Aspen Construction. Um, so I, I did, I did uh, request on behalf of Asplund the procedure, the procedure to uh, contest the bid and submit an, an official protest. So that has been sent over to the city clerk. And um, that includes a letter clarifying the subcontractor portion and um, showing an exhibit that shows the dollar value of each line item and therefore totaling up to um, only 20% subcontract. Um, the, because Asplund's uh, lowest bid was removed, uh, it appears that the contract will be awarded to Hotline, um, but I want to make a motion to reconsider that bid and award it to Asplund, the lowest bidder, which uh, came in lower by about $120,000. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, next uh, speaker. Raul. Thank you, uh, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Council members, thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, my name is Raul Gidea Jr. I know my last name's hard to pronounce even in the Hispanic community. Um, and uh, I represent AGC Apprenticeship. We're a non-union apprenticeship program in construction trades. And we're right here, we're, your name, we're right here in Riverside. Uh, in fact, our first training facility was right up the street here, Riverside Drive on the uh, March Air Base, the section that's been uh, designated for civilian use. Uh, that was our first training facility when I first started back in 2001. Uh, we represent a substantial number of non-union mer or merit shop contractors, construction workers, and apprentices that are in the community here. And I'm 
here to talk about back in June on your June 11th meeting you proposed the Moreno Valley Workforce Program and had approved you know to move forward uh, in agreeing to a, a community workforce agreement with the building trades. Building trades were here in force. I watched the video and I'm here to give the other side. We're the non-union part and the goals that you're trying to reach with that Marina Valley Workforce Program are fantastic and we're all for the same thing. If you put a community workforce agreement or project labor agreement as they're more commonly known, you will restrict a good majority of those non-union workers from ever working on those projects, specifically the apprentices. On, you can do the research yourself. Uh, you look under any standard PLA. Apprentices from a non-union apprenticeship program are not allowed on projects that have a project labor agreement. They have to come only from a union program. So our program is state approved, just like the union programs. We all follow the same guidelines set by the Division of Apprenticeship Standards. So that's, to us, that's discrimination. And that's why we, we oppose PLAs or community workforce agreements whenever we see them. So uh, one of the other issues is money. Again, when a non-union contractor who is allowed to bid on a project gets awarded the project, they have to pay into, the, the workers have to pay into those union trust plans. And most of the times the projects aren't long enough to reach vesting periods. The building trades will still, or the unions will still keep those that all that money that went into the trust plan, specifically the pension plan, because the, the worker never vested. And so we see that as if you're going to do approve a, collect, a community workforce agreement, remove those restrictions. The money follows the man. Allow apprentices from non-union programs. And also not allow you know, a, a, constru a construction company to have to lay their worker off to bring a union worker on. So you remove those three provisions, I can guarantee you, the building trades will not accept it. And thank you. Okay. Thank you, Raul. All right. We'll go close public comments on consent items. All right. Uh, if there's no council member they'd like to speak on any of the items, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent calendar. Um, I will be recusing myself from B5. I move to approve. <coughs> okay. Motion by Mayor Pertambaca, second by Councilmember Cabrera. Okay, please vote. And it's approved uh, four yes, one no. Uh, consent calendar passes. Yes. Thank you, Honorable Mayor. Just for the record, recusal was due to the fact that you are on the board uh, for the organization. Yes. And very briefly, uh, and just in response to the second to the last speaker, um, the case law is clear. Um, MCM Construction Inc. versus City and County of San Francisco, 60 Silk 6 Calab 4, 359, clearly states that we must comply strictly with bid requirements and irregularities are not acceptable because they create an uneven environment. Therefore, staff's recommendation was, as you, um, as you saw it on the hotline, uh, bidder. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll go straight to RCTC for a brief report from Mayor Pro Tem Baca, and then if you can also do the WR COG. Sure. Thank you. Okay, for RCTC, the $138 million SR60 truck lane project through the Badlands is well underway. Crews are busy removing 2.1 million cubic yards of dirt to make room for the new truck climbing lanes and wider shoulders. Motorists are reminded to slow down through the work zone and if possible avoid the area by using I-10 as a detour route or um, Gilman Springs. You can sign up to receive construction updates at www.rctc.org. Construction completion is anticipated by late 2021. WRCOG. The Regional Housing Needs Assessment Methodology. The WRCOG Executive Committee gave authorization to WRCOG staff to submit a comment letter regarding um, SCAG's proposed Regional Housing Needs Methodology. WRCOG prepared and submitted a letter dated September 13, 2019, which states that SCAG region would 
be better served through an allocation process which considers the high cost of increasing needed infrastructure, the lack of consideration of jobs housing balance, and potential conflict with statewide goals on greenhouse gas, greenhouse gases emissions and vehicle miles traveled. WRCOG also expressed opposition for any action that would penalize agencies because the private market is not building homes within their jurisdiction. That concludes my reports. Okay, thank you. A report from um, RCA, Council Member Marquez. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, items covered at the um, recent uh, C uh, RCA Board of Directors meeting on September 9th. Marino Valley um, MSHCP feed collection totaled $205,041, and that is included with 68 residential permits and 8.7 commercial industrial usage in April, May, and June. That includes my report. Thank you. City Manager's report. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, members of the Council. A few quick items tonight. Um, I want to follow up on comments uh, made um, uh, this evening by a couple speakers. Uh, Mr. Topete called my office today, and I was able to speak with him by phone this afternoon. Uh, so I called him on the same day. Um, uh, I informed him uh, regarding the Edgemont Community Services District, which owns and operates the streetlights in the Edgemont area. As the council knows, it is an independent agency over which the city of Moreno Valley exercises no authority. Um, I also uh, indicated that the city did approach the independent Edgemont Community Services District uh, about partnering with the city to replace the district street lights with LED fixtures, uh, much as we're doing with the, the street lights that the city owns in other areas of Moreno Valley. Um, the, uh, unfortunately, the district was not interested uh, in this opportunity. Uh, second item I'd like to talk about tonight, um, as a fellow veteran, I would like to thank Mr. Lopez and his family uh, for their service to our country. Um, as we know, Moreno Valley is a community that deeply values its veterans and focuses on ways to recognize and support them. Our community has repeatedly elected veterans to the city council with two veterans currently serving, Council Members Thornton and Council Member Marquez and Mayor Pro Tem Baca's father delayed his education in order to serve our nation. Uh, this city does so much for vets. Uh, the Hire a Moval veter Veteran Program pays local businesses to hire local vets. Our support for the U.S. Vets Program is also a big priority for this council. We know that. Um, I'd also like to uh, extend a, a personal invitation to Mr. Lopez uh, to please join us on Veterans Day uh, where we will recognize his service and that of other vets uh, in our community. And I also hope he'll be able to join us next spring for our annual Memorial Day ceremony, where we recognize those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for the freedoms that we cherish as a nation. And lastly, uh, tonight's agenda says so much about our community as seen in the emphasis that we all provide on serving youth. The agreements that were on the consent calendar tonight that our council approved support services for, for our youth from infants all the way uh, through, uh, through age 17. Uh, infant care, after school, char develop, character development programs, really special programs uh, here in Moreno Valley. I'd like to thank the council for your continued commitment and leadership in service to Moreno Valley's youth. And that concludes my comments tonight. Thank you. Thank you, City Manager, City Attorney. Nothing today. Thank you very much, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We'll go to closing comments from Council Members. Council Member Dr. Thornton. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to uh, thank my colleagues on the dais and the city staff for putting together um, this agenda and the work that was needed in um, coordinating a partnership with uh, First Tee Inland Empire. And what this is is a program uh, to train um, and teach children about golf. So everything from the etiquette of the play um, to um, um, understanding the clubs and the dynamic. Uh, so now that we have this partnership with First Tee in, uh, Inland Empire, which already has a presence in Colton, Ukaipa, and Redlands, um, this is going to provide those of us in the community that really want our children to learn the, the amazing game of golf. 
Um, so um, they also offer a veterans discount. So please check out their web page. Um, they're going to be um, utilizing the Cottonwood Golf Center. And so I really want to encourage um, our community to uh, get their children involved in this program. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mayor, oh, sorry. Um, Council Member Marquez? Okay. Um, I should have this memorized, right? Who comes next? <laughs> okay, Council Member Cabrera. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple of items here. Uh, first, I would like to um, just recognize uh, a few individuals who went out to the equest equestrian center about uh, two weeks. In, yeah, I believe it was two weekends ago. Uh, and they cleaned up a large portion of that equestrian center over off of Redlands Boulevard. And um, uh, I did go out there really early. There weren't that many people, but apparently after I went on to the next event, there was a lot of people that came out and helped clean it up. And I just want to recognize our parks um, department as well as the, our employees that are out there. And, uh, you know, it's really nice to just talk to them because it's very rare when you do get to have a conversation and, you know, kind of hear their point of view and their perspective of what's going on out at our parks and all of our city properties. So that was pretty nice. And I think we helped for the event that's coming up uh, this weekend a little bit. So uh, hopefully that helped. Um, next, I do want to talk about uh, high school tour that I'm getting ready to schedule in conjunction with our school district. Um, That's something that we did two years ago as well uh, with the Emerging Leaders Council. We went out to all the high schools in Moreno Valley during lunchtime to talk with all of our students uh, to try to just uh, have a conversations with them and also get their perspective as far as you know what what is good about Moreno Valley, what do you really enjoy, and how can we make that better? But more importantly, what they would change about Moreno Valley and how we can improve it, um, what we can add as far as services and programs and all of that. So I'll be working on that here over the next few months, and hopefully we can bring along our police department and our explorers as well. So uh, hopefully our schedules can work out, and, and I invite my colleagues as well to join me on that. I also want to mention uh, this uh, next hike will be on September 28th. Uh, the Parks Department as well, thank you for organizing all of these. We're going up to the San Timoteo Canyon on September 28th. I believe it starts at 7.30 a.m. So if anyone out there is listening, you like uh, hiking, uh, this is a four-mile hike. So it's a little bit longer than some of the other ones we do, but it's a, it's a medium difficulty. It's not too, too difficult. So we invite everyone to come out. And we're giving away free water bottles from Eastern Municipal Water District while supplies last. So uh, definitely look forward to seeing everyone out there. Also, there is an open mic and an art walk happening at Jitters Coffee or Jitters Cafe over on Paris Boulevard. It's the first event that we're doing uh, with the open mic. And so we're going to have some musicians out there. And if anyone out there uh, does poetry or you play the guitar or anything, you have an opportunity to come out and you know show your talent so that'll be on the 27th there at the jitters cafe um, next tomorrow i do have a meeting with the united states um, postal service actually the postmaster i'll be accompanied by council member thornton and a few of our staff as well so uh, the point of that is to really better understand the issue of mailbox theft and uh, to try to come up with solutions to address that um, so we're really looking forward to a productive meeting tomorrow and at our next council meeting I'll come back with a few ideas and hopefully propose some solutions as well. Um, so lastly, I just want to mention um, the El Grito that just happened this past weekend. It was a very nice event. I think it keeps growing every year. The attendance continues to increase and uh, hopefully next year, you know, we can bring it back, have better attendance. And um, that is all that I have for today. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Baca. Thank you so much. Um, I also want to um, uh, talk about El Grito. It's our annual event. It's, it was our third year. I just want to thank the staff for all the hard work you did to make this a uh, successful event. There was over 2,000 people there, and our, our community re were um, Re, uh, remember to bring out their um, umbrellas and their lawn chairs. So I just want to say thank you so much for uh, all the work that went in. I think we had like 10 meetings and um, we raised the money and everything was, was paid for. It's a cultural event and it's celebrating the eve of Mexico's Independence Day. It's um, 
possible with partnerships from the Moreno Valley Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Moreno Valley Unified School District, Moreno Valley College, uh, the Mexican Consulate, and our very own Moreno Valley Police Department who keeps things going um, perfect, like time, time um, the clockwork, and safe because um, everyone there is just having a good time. We had our mayor there, um, Councilwoman Thornton, Council, Councilman uh, Cabrera, and uh, we also had our supervisor, Jeff Hewitt, who was present there and who gave a very good speech in Spanish, by the way. I attended the eighth annual Riverside County Women's Leadership Conference in Corona last week, and it was a very, very good event, and uh, I think we had almost 600 people present, including vendors and um, sponsors. Moreno Valley, once again, won the um, Summer Solar Solarbration, and we're a Sunshine Award winner, and I want to say thank you to our finance department for being there, and uh, I was there to receive the award on behalf of the city, and it's, it's um, just an honor that, and as um, you saw earlier today, that all these awards just keep, you know, coming in. And thank you, Marsha, for all the work you do. Uh, Tom, everyone, all your staff, all the leadership we have here in the city, and the worker bees that make all this possible. Uh, thank you to Lena and Patty for being there as well. Um, we, on, on September the 7th, we had the um, Sunny Mead Boulevard cleanup. And my goodness, there was like over 200 people there, volunteers, just picking up trash and making that uh, boulevard look spotless. And just a reminder that tomorrow is a ribbon cutting ceremony for a floor and decor in District 1 on, uh, where the old home base was on um, Hemlock near the IHOP. So please be there, five o'clock, and we'll be cutting the ribbon. So thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem uh, Baca. And, uh, you know, uh, our city continues to receive awards and also uh, council members as well do too. I, you know, one thing she didn't mention uh, to toot her own horn, but, you know, she did receive the Woman of the Year Award from the Exemplary, let me see here. Okay, it is the 2019 Legacy e uh, Exemplary Service <laughs> Awards, right? Okay, it's a long one. All right, um, okay, so in honor of um, Victoria's recognition, um, you know, our city uh, will be there, you know, to support her uh, in, in this recognition, and we're thrilled uh, for her on that. Let's give her a round of applause. Mm -hmm. I do want to say the El Grito event was a success. Uh, there was over uh, about 2,000 folks uh, that were actually there. Com the community was out there. People were dancing. Uh, it was really, really nice. Uh, just a free community event, and that's what it's really about, I think, for all of us here. You know, we want to continue to, to embrace that, that culture of, you know, um, of, of having fun and, and where there's connection and, and just overall just uh, free events that we have for our community. So I'm really excited that that event was a success. I also am excited of the community programs that we approved here tonight as well. Uh, so like with Hope Vision, you know, especially what uh, we're going to be able to accomplish uh, there through them at Hope Vision, uh, they're going to be doing uh, after school enrichment. And that is so, so important. You know, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of the danger hours, you know, which are after school, you know, between uh, 3.30 to 6.30. Um, and so we got to keep our youth, you know, engaged, you know, in strategic activities. And um, that's why I really support them. And I really uh, am happy the council support it, supports their program. And I know uh, just like last year, they helped 450 youth, uh, young people, that they're going to continue to help even more. So, um, you know, I'm very excited about that. Also, the uh, partnership with First Tee uh, with the golf program. I mean, over the summer, I, I went to the, one of the events there, and I just saw the kids' eyes just light up, you know, when they held uh, the first golf club, you know, and they didn't even know how to hold it at first. And, you know, so it was just a really nice experience. So I'm happy that we're doing that as well. And then also the infant to toddler uh, programs that we're going to be offering for our Moreno Valley residents that are going to be free. Um, so again, infant to toddler programs that are going to be free for our residents. That's another amazing thing that we should be very, very happy about. So there's a lot of great positive things happening in our community. And like the last council meeting when we mentioned, 20,000 new jobs in just the last six years. There's a lot of great things that are happening. 
I do want to address um, an unfortunate event that did happen um, uh, yesterday. Um, when I learned about it, I was very, um, you know, heartbroken uh, about the uh, incident that happened at Landmark Middle School. Um, you know, 21 years ago, I lost uh, my, my friend uh, Jared uh, from uh, a hit. Actually, it was a, a, one, a one punch uh, to the head in 1998. And, um, and it was, you know, just very, very tragic uh, incident that happened. And so uh, um, I've been praying for the family and hoping that, you know, this kid can, can um, make it out of this. Um, because this is just a terrible, terrible event that happened. I want to thank uh, the leadership of our uh, police department, our sheriff's department, our, our Dave Levelier. You know, he was on the spot, you know, right there, you know, at the um, emergency area, you know, emergency room and, you know, and, and all of them and, and all of their hard work as well. And then uh, today, uh, unfortunately, I learned uh, my close uh, uncle that I've, uh, obviously known my whole life. He's come to my uh, community events. I know, Victoria, you've met him um, several times, and you've met him as well, Ulysses. Um, he passed away uh, today. Uh, his name was uh, Herman Gonzalez, and, you know, he was a very uh, longtime resident of Marina Valley, a uh, strong supporter, you know, of this city and, you know, all that we're doing. Um, he would always come to all of the events and, you know, and and by the way, he loves the staff. You know, he loved the staff, and he would always talk very highly of you guys that, you know, that you're the A-plus staff, and you know, you're just doing awesome. So um, in, in his memory, um, I'd like to adjourn the meeting uh, tonight in his memory of Herman Gonzalez at 6.49 uh, p.m.